Beach fishing, the benefits of fishing the end of a beach. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. You may be asking a question like, when I go down to the beach, where are the best places to fish? What are my options? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you a great option for beach fishing, and I'll explain exactly why during the video. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate that because it really helps my channel. Let's get into it. Look at that, look at those wriggling worms, look at that. I took some of that sand out of there so I can find the worms more easily. Now when I came down to this beach today, I came down blind really. I didn't have opportunity to check out the conditions. I really had no idea what the structure would look like on the beach. So it's one of those things when I get down to a spot, I've just got to look at what's in front of me and then make an evaluation of the best place to fish. And on this occasion, there's very little structure at all along the beach. It's quite devoid. There's no real gutters or holes. And further along the beach, the waves are breaking out a lot further. So it would take a really long cast to actually get past the white water and all the shallow broken stuff beyond the waves into the deeper water. So what a fantastic strategy is to fish the end of a beach. Because usually at the end of a beach, generally there's a little bit of a channel where the, where the um, beach meets the rocks. And in this case, today, the, uh, the good water is close to shore at the end of the beach. Another thing that I love about the ends of beaches is because of all the extra food that is there on the rocks, such as crabs and kanjivoy and oysters and all sorts of things, a lot of fish are attracted to rocky headlands at the end of a beach and, and there's lots of small fish as well and where there are small fish there are big fish so this water looks pretty good and actually um, it's 20 past 7 and high tide is at 8 30 so in just over an hour so I'm going to be able to fish the top of the tide I have some lovely fresh beach worms with me and I'm going to fish them with them on a lovely light rod just super light line and I'm hoping to catch some nice uh, whiting and brim. Hopefully not a salmon, because if I do, it's gonna be a slow fight to get it in on the really light line. And then I'm gonna put out a big bait on my big rod, which has got 15 kilo line on it. So I can handle a reasonably decent sized fish on that line. It's actually a beautiful afternoon. The wind has completely died. So it's really pleasant when there's no wind. I love it. And uh, great time of the day. So, just going to get my little rod, I'll show you what I've got. This is really just like a little estuary outfish, outfish, outfit. And I have 10 pound line, 10 pound monofilament line on this reel. And I've also got 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, so it's 10 pound line all the way through. Very, very simple rig. I've purely got a small star sinker running on the main line to a swivel down to a worm hook. So just a really basic one hook rig and I've got some lovely uh, fresh worms here that I caught this afternoon. I'll just give them a little bit of a grab so you can see them wriggling around in there. I'll pull one out, just uh, where are we? There you go. Just a good bait size worm. Oh, he just broke into a couple of pieces which is, not, which is all right. And I'm going to use the headpiece first. So but when he opens his mouth, I'm going to put the hook in there. Like so. Thread it on. I'm actually going to continue up the line over the top of the hook just to make it a slightly larger, more attractive bait. Let it stand out and then cut it off. So you can see the actual bait is about so big so that would be very attractive to a lot of fish a bait like that so this will be my first cast the sun's actually almost setting this spot here is the shortest distance to the back of the waves but it's still not a really short distance i'm estimating it's probably a good 30 meters at least anyway and there has been a lot of weed 
I can see there's weed all over this beach, but when I look in the water, I can't really see much weed in the water. So I'm hoping that that's the case. And I'm initially gonna cast out right in the corner. I'm gonna fish right on the edge of the beach here where the beach meets the rocks because I can see it's a lovely little pocket just there. And in between the sets now, you can see it'd be relatively easy for me to flick my line in there. That looks like the, the spot where you'd absolutely catch some brim in there. Well, I got out, I certainly got out into the zone that I'd like to be. So let's see how long it takes to get a bite. So what would I expect to catch here with a worm? Probably most likely brim and whiting. Okay, my first bite. What is it? That's the question. Feels a bit like a whiting to me. Yeah. There you go. Nice little whiting. Look at that. So he's a legal fish. And we love them. We love whiting. So that was my first little flick into the corner and I've caught a whiting so I'm happy with that. At least I've got a fish, it didn't take too long. So he swallowed the hook. You can see that worm has been sucked all the way down. So I'll just look after this guy and then I'll get another bait out there as quickly as I can. So it only took five minutes or so to get the first fish, which seemed a little bit like a long time actually, because sometimes I get bites so quickly as soon as it lands in the water, but still that wasn't too long. I cast it out a little bit further that time. My intention is to fish just for a little while like this with my little right rod. Just getting a bite. Uh, have I got it? Yeah, I've got the fish. Um, so my intention is to fish with this little light line just for the next half an hour. It feels like I've stuck on a bit of weed actually. I had a fish, but I think I've got a weed fish. I've either got a weed fish plus a fish or just weed. I had a good bite though. Yeah, I think I've just got weed. Not sure. Yeah, I had a had a quite a good bite. It felt like a decent whiting bite. I've still got my bait. Anyway, back to what I was saying. My intention is to fish with this for a little while, and then I've got a heavier line that I'd like to put on. I fill it a, a bit of slab bait, either I fill it something that I catch. I do have half a dozen pilchards with me as well, so I could potentially put a pilchard on, which is lovely condition, so I'm going to kind of do both. Do this and then fish with something bigger. Shouldn't have missed that other fish. I was a little bit impatient. Getting another bite. Okay, will I strike too soon this time or will I wait? I'm just waiting. Oh, got it this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, it's 
So this is one of the other species that I was expecting I could catch at the end of a beach. Uh, it's got to make sure I don't get spiked. So you got some lovely little black brim. So he loves the worms. So yep, he's um, big enough to keep. So I'm going to put him in with the uh, whiting that I've already got and get my line back out there. So I was talking about the benefits of fishing the end of the beach or the end of a beach and really based on tonight's conditions this is by far the best option. I can land in some really good water and I've already caught a couple of nice fish so it's, oh, it's exciting, I love it. I really didn't, as I said, I didn't know what was going to be here when I got here but there's always something that you can do. I could probably have cast that out a little bit further, I think, then. But I'll wait and see. I just gave it a little flick. All right, so I've just lobbed it out. I'm getting another bite. Yep, I'm on again. So I was in the water then for maybe, maybe two minutes, maybe. This will be another lovely eating fish. This guy's pulling pretty hard. Whoa! I lost my stuff. <laughs> that was actually a small salmon. But I'm fishing really light, so... He just broke my line, that little guy. I'm going to need to re-rig, look at that. Oh well, better get back to the drawing board. Now you can see that where I am here, I'm right in the corner of the beach. I'm very, very close to the rocks. And when I look in the water, I can see where the rocks are and I can see where the sand is. Pretty much the sand goes right or hard up against these rocks. I actually don't want to be casting my bait in amongst the rocks. I want to be on the sand beside the rocks. So I'm mindful of that and always having a look at the water just to ascertain where the sand is and where the rocks are. But I'm pretty safe here and it's really quite comfortable. I don't really want to hook another salmon. If I hook another salmon, I'll have to be a little bit gentler than the last one. I would much prefer to hook a brim or a whiting. These light little rods are fantastic when the conditions permit. As you can see, I can hold this rod with one hand. It weighs hardly anything. And it's a lot of fun fishing this way. And you can do it a lot of the time off the beach except when it's like really rough. Usually there's somewhere that you can um, find yourself a nice little gutter and just flick, flick a bait out. Okay, got a fish. That was really weird. I don't know what this is. Actually, it just got off. It was very heavy actually. I actually think the fish that I just had on then was an undesirable in as much as I think it, it felt a little bit like um, a banjo ray or something heavy and awkward. It didn't really feel like a fighting fish. So I don't really mind so much that it got off. The reason I, I say that is that fish that I just had on that was really quite heavy I didn't really feel the bite, it was just all of a sudden just a bit, of, a bit of a weight on the line. I didn't feel a nice, solid, aggressive bite. 
I just felt this kind of heavy weight start to move off with it. I was just waiting then, because I could feel the fish um, having a good go at it, but... I can't wind this one in yet, it's got a little bit of go in it. So yes, I have caught a salmon. It's not a big one, but I am going to keep him. Beautiful little piece of worm there. Well, it hasn't been boring. I've had four fish to the shore in about 30 minutes. I pretty much had a bite every cast. So, I'm just about to switch over. I might have maybe one or, one or two more casts with this. And then I'm actually gonna use the rig that I call the world's deadliest rig and put a pilchard on there because this time of the night, it's a very high chance that you'll hook a tailor and I don't really want to get bitten off. Yep, getting a bite. Something's having a go, what is it? Something's having a bit of a go, I just wanted to swallow it. Yep, I think, can I still feel it? Couldn't quite work out what was happening then. Yeah, I've got a fish. Just really waiting for it to give it a good go. I think it's a whiting, that's what it feels like. Where am I? It's hard to see in this, in this dark. Yeah, it is a whiting. So that's my second whiting, which is good. Oh, well, they're not on fire, there's a, certainly fish out there. Now here's a nice little eating fish. So, and I uh, just hooked it's just really just taking a hook into the edge of his mouth, really. So I'll take him up. So I've put my other rod down. I've caught a few fish with that one. Now I'm going to use three quarters of a pilchard on this rig, which I've done a whole video on called the world's deadliest rig, which is effectively a main hook with a stinger on a relatively short wire trace that I made up, put this together. The main purpose of using this rig is so that you don't get bitten off by creatures like sharks and fish with sharp teeth. It just means you can catch other species, but if you do get bitten by anything that is um, razor sharp, you're not going to get, you're not going to lose your line. You're going to catch it. So 
I think the condition, the water looks pretty good out there, and I'd be interested to see what we'll have a go at this um, this bait. So I'm just going to put the stinger hook in near the tail, like that. So I've got the, the barb of the stinger out this side, and I've actually got the main hook embedded in the body of the bait. But the pilchards are a fairly soft bait, so I'm just going to toss that out. I think it's a really interesting area where I'm fishing just here because I'm I'm on the sand but I'm close to the reef so all sorts of things could um, be out there. I'll just wait now. But I'm pretty well equipped. I've got 15 kilo line on this rod. So I could land something pretty decent if I hook something big. We'll see how long it takes to get a bite. Yeah, I got a fish. Okay. Well, that was first cast, which is, it didn't take too long. We'll see what this is. It feels like a brim, actually. Or it could be a small salmon, I'm not sure. Gonna get it straight up actually. I'm not gonna muck around. There you go, and no, I was right. Hang on. Oh, I was wrong. It's a trevally. Look at that. It's a nice trevally. Look at that fella. He's taken that pilchard. Well I'll take that. I'm happy to add that to the um, to the tally. So that's good on my, with my first cast on that pilchard. So now I've got four different fish species so far. I'll take him in and rebait. I'm going to use most of this pilchard. I'm just going to chop his head off. Use that piece. Then I'm going to whack him over here. This is pretty much what I did with my previous cast. It didn't take all that long to get a bite, really. And those trevally at that size are really quite sweet. Beautiful to eat. I can feel a bug on my neck. Go away, Mr. Bug. There you go, beautiful. Okay, let's see if we get another trevally or something different. Oh, I got him, yep. This is fun. Plenty of bites. What have I got this time? I have a feeling it might be a tailor. That's what I think. It's going to bring it in pretty quick actually. Just going to get it all the way up here. Yep. It is a tailor. Or other known, otherwise known as bluefish or shad or cha shad in South Africa. So these fish are actually pretty, pretty widely spread around the world. And um, really glad I've got the wire trace on because they've got razor sharp teeth. You know, I caught one of these recently and I filleted it up for bait and it was awesome bait. I was just getting so many bites on it. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this guy. Whoops. I don't want his teeth to get me. 
because it would make a mess of my finger if that was the case. I don't know. Yeah, I've got something. I wasn't sure if I was on a fish then or not, but I am. It took a little while before I got a bite then, but eventually came. It's got a bit of fight in it. It might be another tailor, I'm not sure. I'm going to get it in quick if I can. Yeah, it's another tailor. So that's uh, my last two, two casts have been Taylor. Very lively. Both similar size. They're nice fish for eating. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was the pilchard bait flying out of his mouth. <laughs> he was chucking pilchard at me. I try to stay clean when I'm fishing. <laughs> okay, well I can see that the main hook has got this guy. Still got the stinger lying there. Yeah, I don't really want to stick my finger in where his teeth are. Oh, so there's a few of these guys out there. Well, I'll head back up to the uh, rebaiting zone. Well, I've been down at the beach for maybe an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. I've caught five different species of fish. I've got a beautiful feed of fish to go home really heaps of action so it's an awesome thing to do to fish at the end of a beach because of the structure and oftentimes that's the only place where you can actually get into some nice green water behind the waves so great lesson to learn i hope you've enjoyed this content and you've learned a few things i try to teach you as much as i can so i hope you appreciate it once again make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video